morning y'all we're back for another episode so it's wednesday september 23rd we're now into our autumn slash fall season got a rep from my university first historically black college in texas second oldest university in texas excuse me y'all i need a haircut i ain't had time do much of anything lately and so here we go gotta have our science safety equipment because you never know who's gonna try to throw mud on us and so today's um issue today's episode so i got this laptop that this district is giving me and i have my own personal printer multi-function printer i went and asked the librarian today about hooking up the, the printer to the computer. Now I can get it to print. What I can't do is get it to scan. Um, so if I go to my computer and try to print something, it'll print. But if I go to my computer, there is no scanning um, interface for a scanner. So you can try to um, connect the scanner, but if it doesn't read the drivers or whatever, then it's not going to, let me stop. The way that they have our computer set up, we are, as a teacher, are not allowed to add any type of downloaded softwares or software to our computer. So in order for me to connect my multifunction Canon printer, hold on, let me do something real quick so you can see it. Oh no, I can't, I can't reverse the camera while I'm trying to reverse the camera so you can see it, but yeah, no. so anyways, so now I'm trying to get, figure out, the reason why I need a scanner is because I have, just got an email. The reason I got a scanner is because I have documents that I need to upload um, to my Google Classroom as a PDF. If I can scan it and upload it as a PDF, there's an app called Kami, K-A-M-I, um, I'll try to remember to put the Chrome extension inside, I mean, comment section. But there's an app called Cami where the kid can, excuse me, students can download whatever PDF file. It has to be a PDF. And once they download it, they can actually write on the screen. So if a kid doesn't have a printer, they don't have to worry about trying to print it off, get to a printer, print it off, or save it on a, a jump drive, print it off, come home with it safe write on it then scan it back up it's all it just makes it everything easier but i think the fact that we're going virtual like when you go virtual you have to release some of the information to the people you gotta release that which means you have to train them communicate with them allow them to communicate with you then release them and support them in that training communication and support are the three biggest reasons that people um find frustration or should I say those are the three biggest things that companies, organizations, uh, churches, fraternities, schools, jobs, um, they need to have a good training process. They need to create great communication, which, which is tough because you have more people's personalities and uh, prior experiences. So you have training community and then support. If somebody tells you what they need, you got to give them what they need or else you're in the way and you're just adding to the frustration. So I've got to figure out how to get these assignments uploaded, either scanned in somewhere into my jump drive and then take my jump drive and go back to my computer. But I've got to find a way, otherwise uh, I'm not, I'm not going to be happy because I'm not being productive. So to my teachers out there, you're not alone in this. I'm not new to technology. I am not new to digital classrooms. I am not new to the processes of teaching online. I am new to the current space that I'm in and really just trying to make sure that the people in this space see, because I'm showing um, effort and proving results. Um, so yeah. You're frustrated. Don't be frustrated. You're not alone. You have hit the wall 
don't hit the wall. Just get to the wall and touch the wall. Rub on it, but don't hit it. Um, so yeah, when you when you think about all of the things that go into teaching online, being a digital instructor, that means you actually have to know um, your content, number one. You have to know, you have to have a strong grasp of what you're teaching and how to teach it. Knowing what to teach or what the content of what you're teaching is, is just a small portion, but how you deliver that information, how you go back and check for understanding, how you um, get your students to apply their understanding and synthesize their understanding, that's a whole nother ball game. And so knowing how, knowing what the answers are is one thing, knowing what to teach and when to teach it is another thing, knowing the lesson cycle and how to build one thought leads to the next thought, which leads to the next thought, which leads them to the front doorstep of the understanding of something else. Um, and then just having to deal with um, the digitization, if that's a word it is now. If it's not a word, it's a word now. The digitization of all of that process. So now you have to take all of that and put it into a digital platform. So... I was always good at knowing the information. I had to get my lesson structure in place. And then I had to learn. The hardest part for me was learning how to transition, not just me, but me and the students into another activity. So everybody's not going to stop at the same time or start at the same time because that's just not how people's brains um, work. So how do we get a kid or a group of students who finish at a different time to, to know what to do next when we know what we want them to do, but we don't always know um, the best way for us to do it as the teacher and be feasible with doing it, which leads the kids to the same um, digital destination. Some kids are still pencil and paper. If you're teaching math, if you're still pencil and paper, most math teachers, most, I'm not going to speak for all, most math teachers prefer that their kids use pencil and paper. I showed a few math teachers the Canby app. Some of them said, I like that. I'm going to have my kids do that. The ones who are digitally inclined, they liked it. They want to use that, and they're going to teach their kids how to do it because it's, it comes natural for them. The teachers that didn't like it, either they didn't try it yet, or they're just not into the digital, the digital side of things yet. So don't get frustrated. Understand that you're going to be okay. Understand that your kids are going to be okay. I am not new to this. I'm in a new space and still trying to figure out, okay, there has to be an app that I can use on my iPad that will get me, I can, there has to be a way I can take a picture of this. It's a picture and upload it into some app and it'll spit it back out as a PDF. And then from there, I should be able to do what I'm doing. Now I just have to find the app. What is the name of that app? I don't know, but I know that there is one and I'm going to find it. And hopefully it's free and working. But I can't get frustrated. I have to use that frustration to lead me to some answers and some results. I have to use my frustration to lead me to some answers and some results. Now once I figure this out, I have to go back to my team and say, team, this is my my new findings. This is my data. I ran strategic science. This is my data. This is the process. This is what I, here's my data. Here was my process. Here's my materials. Here's my product. Product, data, process, materials. Backwards. So when you plan your lessons, plan them backwards. I want them to do the test. Before they do the test, here's what the test is going to look like. Here's what's on the test. Here's what the review is going to look like. Here's what's on the review. Here are three activities that the kids can do that model and or reflect what's on the review. Now, there are going to be three activities at three different levels. The first one is easy. The second example uh, assignment is going to be a little medium. And then that third example is going to be hard. And then they're going to go to the review. Now, we know what the test looks like. We know what the review feels like. We know what activities they're going to have to get up to the review. We know We already know where they're going to struggle. And when they get to a space where they struggle, we know what we're going to say and do to help them get over that hump. When it comes to this digital stuff, um, the people that know are not in a position. 
and the people in the position don't know. I'll say that again. Most cases, not all. I'm not going to speak for every organization or company or church or even family. Most people in the position don't know. And most people that know aren't in the position. So that's where the communication has to come in. That's where the training has to come in. That's where the support has to come in. If you're the big guy, the big dog, but you don't know, you now have to let somebody under you train you on a specific skill. Once you get the training on that specific skill, he's shown it or they have shown it to you and backwards and forwards, and they can work out the kinks. That's they just trained you. Now you have to go communicate with everyone else who doesn't know, hey, this is these are some people over here who are certified and qualified in this skill. So you support those people who have that skill. You create an, an environment or an atmosphere where those people can easily and effectively um, support the rest of the people in the organization through communication. You know what I mean? In, in the training. Training, communication, and support. If you know what to do and I don't, but I'm on charge, then guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to leverage my my position and my relationship with you so that you can come into my my office or I'm going to create the space for you to come in and teach. You come in and train, we're going to work on the communication part and I'm going to support because you've already trained me. I had my aha moment. I want everybody else to get the same aha moment that I have because it's going to make me look good as a leader. And now those people are just as good as me and I am just as good as you. And we've all been made better to rise together within that one skill. Now, if there are other skills that need to be put in place, some people are great at digitization. Make them the digitization person while they learn lesson cycle, lesson structure, transitions, data, all that other stuff. If somebody else is good at um, making kids feel good and, and just communicating with parents, let them lead that. They may not be as great with numbers and data and Excel spreadsheets. Whatever they're good at, let them lead in their area of expertise. Hold on. Let me see. I got to check my time. See how much time I got. Okay. So, the long and short of what I'm saying is this. We got to get to a space where somebody has the answers. The person who has the answers is not the person that's going to make the impact. That person has to give those answers to the impactful person. You have information and you have influence. One person is going to have the information, but they don't have the influence. Another person is going to have the influence, but they don't have the information. And when those two people come together <clears throat> and, and, and push and pull with each other and, and say, okay, with this person, we need the influence. With that person, we're going to go together but with this person, this person needs influence. So let me influence them to your information. Some people don't need influence. Some people just need to know what it is that I need to do so I can do it. Okay. Now, same two people, influence and information, they're going to go together and tell this person. So if the person with the information tells somebody else the information, then the person who's the influence was there as a witness. So this person is not pushing back against you. They simply don't know and they're probably not outspoken. So they just want you to like make it easy for them to do it and they'll do it. Other people, they don't have a problem doing it. Uh, it's not that they don't know the information. It's just that there's something else going on and they need some emotional impact to be imparted. So then that's when you two go together and let the person who's the influencer. Mr. Jones. Yes. Could you do me a favor and stop by the front office whenever you get a chance with your laptop? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All righty. All right, y'all. So I got to go. Keep that in mind. Peace.